Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jelen from Mr. Excel. I'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 181, month to date pivot table. Well, hey, today's question, today's idea for this uh, duel is sent in by Mike. It says, can you create a month to date report in a pivot table? All right, let's go. So here's what we have. We have uh, two years worth of dates from January uh, 2016 all the way up into 2017. Now, of course, I'm recording this in April. It's April 15th right now when I'm recording my piece of the duel. And so we over here, we have a uh, pivot table showing dates down the left-hand side, category across the top, uh, and revenue in the heart of the pivot table. Now, to create a month-to-date report, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to add a new helper column over here uh, to my original data and that's going to check for two things. And because I'm checking for two things, I'm going to use the AND function. Both things have to be true for it to be month to date. And I'm going to use a function here called TODAY. Today, all right. So I want to know if the month of today, open and close paren, is equal to the month of that date over there in column A. If that's true, if it's the current month, so in other words, if it's April, then uh, check and see if the day of that date over there in A2 is less than or equal to the day of today. Beautiful thing is when we open this workbook tomorrow or a week from now, uh, the day of today will automatically update and we double click to copy that down. All right, now we have to get this extra data into our pivot table. So I come here pivot table analyze and it's not that hard to change the data source just click that big button there and say that we want to go over to column D click OK all right so now we have that extra field I'm going to insert a slicer based on that month to date field and I only want to see where month to date is true now do we need that slicer to be that big no we can probably make it be two columns uh, and just kind of have it unobtrusive out there on the right hand side. So now what we have is all the dates in 2016 and all the dates in 2017. Although it would be really cool to compare these side by side by side. So I'm going to take that date field and analyze. I'm going to group the field and I'm going to group it up to just years. I don't actually care about the individual days. I just want to know month to date uh, where we are. So I'll group it up to years and what we'll end up with is two years there and I'm going to then rearrange this. Put those years to go across, categories to go down, and now I see where we were last year and where we were this year. All right, now, because I've done grouping, I'm no longer allowed to create a calculated field inside the pivot table. If I wanted to have a year over year amount over there, I would right click, remove grand total, all right, and now we are, uh, so percentage change. We're outside of a pivot table pointing inside of the pivot table. We have to make sure to either turn off get pivot data or just build the formula like this equal J4 divided by I4 minus 1 and that creates a formula that we can copy down without any hassles at all uh, like that. All right, Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Yes, I sent the question to Mr. Excel because I did it with formulas and I couldn't figure out how to do it with a standard pivot table and then I remembered seeing over the years, Mr. Excel do a bunch of cool videos about helper columns and pivot tables. That is a beautiful formula and a beautiful solution. So that's how to do it with a pivot table. Let's go see how to do it with a formula. Now, I'm doing this two days after he did it. F2, I have the today function, which is always going to be the date information for today's current date that will be used by the formulas down here because we want it to update. I've also used an Excel table and it's named F sales. If I control down arrow, I see it's 414, but I want to be able to add the latest records and have our formulas update, including when we jump to the next month. Control up arrow. All right. I have year criteria as the column headers, the category as the row headers, and then the particulars for month and day will come from that cell. So I'm simply going to use the sum ifs function since we're adding with multiple conditions. 
the sum range. Here's the revenue. We're going to use that great trick for an Excel table. Right at the top, we see that black downward pointing arrow. Boom, that puts in the proper table name. And then in square brackets, the field name, comma. Criteria range, we're going to have to use date twice. So I'm going to start with date. Click, there's the date column, comma. Now I'm in April, so I need to create the condition greater than or equal to April 1st. So comparative operators, greater than or equal to, in double quotes, and I'm going to join it. Now I have to create some date formula that always looks here and creates the first of the month for this particular year. So I'm going to use the date function. Year, well, I have the year right as the column header, and I'm going to hit the F4 key one, two times to lock the row but not the column. So when it moves over here, it'll move to 2017, comma. The month, I'm going to use the month function to get the month number 1 to 12. That is whatever month is up in that cell, F4 to lock it in all directions, close parentheses. And then comma, 1, it's always going to be the first of the month, no matter what month this is, close parentheses. All right, so that's the criteria. It'll always be greater than or equal to the first of the month, comma. Criteria range 2, I'm going to get my date column, comma. Criteria 2, well, this is going to be less than or equal to the upper limit. So in double quotes, less than or equal to and double quotes. And the ampersand. I'm going to cheat. Watch this. I'm just going to copy this from up here since it's the same thing. Control C, Control V, except for the day. We have to use the day function and always get as our upper limit whatever the day from this particular month is. F4 to lock it in all directions. Close parentheses on date. All right, so that's our criteria two, comma. Criteria range three, it is category. There it is, comma. And there's our row header. So this one, we have to F4 one, two, three times. Lock the column, but not the row. So when we copy the formula down, it will move to gizmo and widget. Close parentheses, and that is the formula. Drag it over. Double click and send it down. I can see there's trouble. I better come to the last cell diagonally furthest away, hit F2. Now, the default behavior for table formula nomenclature is when you copy the formulas to the side, the actual columns move as if they were mixed cell references. Now, we could lock them, but I'm not going to do that this time. Now, notice when you copy it down, it works fine. But when you copy to the side, that's when the actual columns move. So watch this. I'm going to Control-C and control V, and then that avoids F2, the columns from moving when you copy it to the side. Double click and send it down. Now our percentage change formula equals the end amount divided by the beginning amount, minus 1. Control Enter, double click and send it down. Now before we go test it and add some new records, I actually want to create this label up here so it's dynamic. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to say, equal sign, and we're going to do a text formula. So anytime we want text in a formula, you have to put it in double quotes. And I'm going to type sales between space and double quote ampersand. And now I need to extract from that single date there the first of the month to the end of the month. I'm going to use the text function. The text function can take a number, dates or serial numbers, comma, and use some custom number formatting. In double quotes, I always want to see three-letter abbreviation for the month, MMM. I always want it as the first. Now, if I put a 1 here, comma, space, Y, 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 that won't work. Let's just see that that gives us a value error because it doesn't like that 1. But we're allowed to insert a single character if we use forward slash. That's in custom number formatting. The MM and the YY will be understood by custom number formatting as month and year. And now custom number format will understand to insert the number 1, F2. And now we're simply going to ampersand in double quote space, dash space, and double quote ampersand text of that comma. And now we just use straight number formatting, MMM space D comma space YYY. And double quote, close parentheses, control, enter. Now let's just, before we add some data, let's just change this. Pretending that today 
was showing 3 slash 15 slash 2017. Just like that, all the formulas are updating. And our text formula is also. Control Z. Now let's go down to the bottom of the data set. Control down arrow. I want to add one new record. I'm in the last cell of the data set. I hit, hit Tab to add a new record to our data set. I'm simply going to copy this record over here. Control V. Control up arrow. And there we can see the difference. If we wanted to check these formula values against the ones Mr. Excel did equal sign, relative cell reference, equal sign, click on the sheet. We're going to click right in I4. We could see our formula up there. Control Enter. Actually, I'm going to drag it down. Control Enter just populated everything I had highlighted. And of course, false, false. But guess what? Equals that amount right there minus, click Control down arrow, Control backspace. So I'm going to subtract that just to check. And sure enough, that was the exact amount. We could look back there. That is a little fun with some ifs and some date calculations today and even some text formula fun. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel. All right, Mike, that's awesome. So to wrap it up, Mike took the data and turned it into a table using Control T that allows more data to be added to the table and the formulas will update. Created that great little formula with some ifs, date, month, and day functions. Remember pressing F4 three times locks the reference to just the column. Uh, though watch out if you drag a table formula sideways using the fill handle, the columns change, but copy and paste alleviates that problem. I never knew that one. And then nice trick there using the heading with the text date format and that backslash one to insert a number one in the text backslash in any character uh, would allow you to, to insert something. So you might have to do something like backslash C, backslash O, backslash O, backslash L to get an entire word in there, but it would work. All right, my method uh, was using a pivot table. I added a helper column with a month to date formula. That one there using equal and checking if the month and the day match. Uh, add that field as a slicer, set the slicer equal to true. And then uh, bonus tip group daily dates up to years. And then added a calculation outside of the pivot table while avoiding get pivot data. And I'm interested, I still don't know how Mike did it with his, uh, his formula. Uh, he managed to use the mouse to point to this equal to something that's on my pivot table and didn't get get pivot data. Maybe, maybe he's turned it off. All right, well, hey, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is fun. It's Dueling Excel time.